The Young President Organization is the largest CEO leadership organization in the world and for the second time is holding its YPO Edge event in the mother city. Aton Capital is a global financial advisory firm specializing in helping those with money acquire residence and citizenship around the world and owns something called the Passport Index. And its CEO, President, joined me earlier to discuss the business of globalization in the era of rising anti-globalization sentiment. Please tell me about the business of globalization within the rising anti-immigration sentiment in the world. Indeed, we live in a very interesting times where extreme right and populism across the globe is uh, calling for rising walls and anti-migration sentiments. However, we believe that today never as in the history of human uh, mobility, we're seeing the rise of mobility of passports around the world. People are more mobile, they require more freedom of mobility, and this is what governments today have to challenge. We have an uh, unprecedented level of migration, and this is only the beginning. Political instability across the world, climate change, will triple the number of displaced people we have in the next 50 years. So our company, Art and Capital, advised many governments on migration policies and how to refine migration and how to create a world where people can move freely um, and overcome the challenge of place of birth or nationality of birth. You guys own something called the Passport Index and it looks into the number of countries citizens can visit without requiring a visa. The real question there is how much of your business is affected by politics of expediency, meaning whoever is the incumbent in a country, for instance, at the time, and how much of it is based on the real fundamentals? Indeed, the Passport Index is uh, the global authority of ranking passports uh, based on how many countries uh, one can travel with his passport uh, without visa or visa on arrival. It is alive um, and uh, it has more than 45 million users. Many governments are using it as a benchmark to compare their score of mobility and increase it. Uh, what we find very interesting is that uh, every year we see a 15% increase in global mobility. That means that countries are signing unilateral or bilateral agreements to increase the power of the passports of their citizens, allowing them to travel freely, to do more business and to expand their horizon. Um, in that interesting reality, we see as well a, a trend of wealthy businessmen uh, looking to have more than one passport or more than one residency. Um, and this is a, a trend that will continue to, uh, to increase in, in the next uh, 10 to 20 years. Um, and the African Union uh, passport, which has been suggested, is one of the reasons why we're here as President Kagame was at the YPO. Uh, and this is one of his uh, missions to make that a reality. I'm going to ask you this because you mentioned even the African Union single passport. To anybody who's on the ground, to our colleagues in Nigeria, down to us here, we know that we need visas between these two countries. So how, far, how much of it is just the dream, this you know, single African passport? I mean, how is it going to happen when two countries can't even you know, sort out visas between them? It is uh, a big challenge ahead and uh, it is not going to happen over a, a day. But uh, when you look at Europe, uh, over the uh, period of uh, the last 30 years, it became a reality. Um, and the benefits of the mobility of European citizens have been proven years over years in terms of creation of wealth, um, equal rights uh, for opportunities of all European citizens. There is no reason why 1.2 billion Africans cannot move freely and expand within the African Union. Uh, right now, the best African passport is Seychelles, with a right of 132 countries visa-free, followed by Mauritius and South Africa, which has 98 countries visa-free, and is ranking around 48 in the global ranking. Uh, a such a passport, if it exists and when it exists, will be actually one of the best passports in the world that will allow uh, anywhere between 130 and 145 countries visa-free, which will rank it in the top 20, mm. country, uh, 20 passports in the world. Mm. Uh, and I'm the opportunity that this will create for 1.2 billion citizens is incredible. The Brits, as it is now, trying to divorce Europe, as it were, 
you know, are a bit disillusioned about what globalization was supposed to do for them and their economy. Is that not the same dream that is now being sold to Africans? Well, um, the Brits has always their own vision of, uh, of their place and role within the European world um, and in the world uh, entirely. Um, however, uh, as a generation of uh, first generation of European that I have experienced, uh, the fact that I can cross today uh, from one end to the Europe to the other one, uh, more than 15 countries without stopping at a border, uh, it is a reality uh, which we can never go back to. And uh, I believe my children will live in a world where uh, this will be part of a norm. We don't believe in a world without borders, let me be clear. But we believe in a world where passports will increase their mobility and it will allow an increase to maybe 85% of the global world uh, to travel uh, to any country in the world they wish to. That's called control migration. What the European Union, what Brits do not want is uncontrolled migration. Uh, people who are uh, coming to their countries without being able to be verified and creates, of course, security and economic threats uh, to the countries. But increasing the passport power of the countries, we believe, is one of the solutions of the challenges that migration uh, and, and uh, global mobility has today.